Well, hello for you, and welcome to solving rational equations. I can solve equations that involve rational expressions. Uh, I sure can. I hope by the end of this video you can too. So solving rational equations, we're going to tackle these kind of problems by working through uh, some typical examples that you'll find. And I sort of classify the example as we go through. So example number one is a simple ratio. Um, with instances where a variable appears in the denominator of a rational expression, and this is a very important, you need to state the restrictions on the variables. Now, I'm sure you did this last year uh, in the grade 11 course, so that shouldn't be anything new to you, um, but that's the first thing we're going to do. So. Uh, these ones for a simple ratio, if you multiply both expressions by the denominators, that will in fact clear the denominators and you no longer have a rational expression to solve. So that's the basic gist of what we're going to do and I've got two examples to do that with. Of course if you printed out the note you already know that. Uh, so here we go. Our first example, we have to state the restriction on the variable and remember what restricts the variable is the fact that the denominator cannot be equal to zero. So if the denominator can't be equal to 0, that means x in this case cannot be equal to 1. Now in order to clear the denominator here, um, the only denominator I see is x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this thing by x minus 1. And then I have to multiply this side by x minus 1 as well. And when I multiply this side by x minus 1, those two factors completely cancel. So what we're left with is x plus 3 on this side and on the other side if I use the distributive law 2x minus 2. Which means that I no longer have a rational expression, I have a simple linear expression um, that you could give to a grade 9 to solve. I'm going to go through it very quickly. I'm going to subtract uh, x from both sides so I get 3 equals x minus 2, then I'm going to add 2 to both sides so I get 5 equals x. And since our answer here, x equals 5, does not in fact um, correspond to the restriction on our variable, then we have no problem here. Our answer is simply x equals 5. Going on to the next expression now, uh, now I have two, I have a denominator on both sides. So what I'm going to do is multiply uh, both sides by a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply, oh, let's state the restrictions on the variable first. Uh, x cannot equal, well in this case x can't equal 0, and from the other denominator x can't equal negative 3. So there's our restrictions on the variables. Now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides, multiply both sides by x times x plus 3. So let's pick a different color here and I'm going to, if I multiply this side by x times x plus 3 and I multiply this side by x times x plus 3. We can do some cancelling, we can cancel out factors. Uh, in fact, this x is going to cancel this x and over on this side the x plus 3 cancels the x plus 3. So all I'm left with multiplying is on this side x minus 1 times x plus 3 and I'm just going to write that down as a multiplication. And on the other side uh, x plus 1 times x because the other two things have been stroked out so x times x plus 1. Now when I expand it I'm going to get x squared and then plus 3x minus x is plus 2x minus 3 and on the other side I get x squared minus x. Now since the x square, squareds appear on both sides I can subtract x squared off of both sides and it's gone so this is simply 2x minus 3 equals negative x and when I subtract 2x on both sides I get negative 3 equals negative 3 um, x and this is not working out right. What have I done wrong here? Uh, this should have been a plus. There we go. So this is a positive x or just plus, just an x. So when I subtract 2x on both sides, I get negative 3 equals 
uh, negative x and therefore dividing both sides by negative 1 x equals 3 and once again since the answer we got x equals 3 um, does is not one of these restrictions on the variables we're good to go okay next type of problem getting a common denominator so if you have a sum or a difference of two rational expressions like we do here I've got a rational expression and then a sum and then another rational expression so this is a sum of two rational expressions it's probably easiest if we get a common denominator we could just multiply both sides by a common denominator uh, and that would clear fractions too um, but it's sometimes easier to write down easier to see uh, less chance of you making mistakes if you actually just go ahead and get a common denominator so in this case my common denominator is going to be x times x plus 1 now this fraction has the x so it needs the x plus 1 so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1 not that you can see that very much, okay? Uh, but the top just becomes 3 times x plus 1. Now this expression over here already had a denominator of x plus 1. So in order to get a denominator of x times x plus 1, I just have to multiply top and bottom by x. So this on the top just becomes plus 4x. And of course it equals 2. Now the top can simplify, so I have 3x plus 1, or sorry, plus 3 plus 4x over x times x plus 1, and that's going to equal 2, and so the top is going to be 7x plus 3 over x times x plus 1, which equals 2. Um, now, going about solving, I need to multiply both sides. Here, I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to say multiply by, to clear this denominator, I need to multiply by x times x plus 1. Okay, so if I multiply by x times x plus 1, it's going to disappear on this side, and all I'm going to be left with on this side is 7x plus 3. And on the other side, I'm going to have 2 times x times x plus 1. So let's take a look. 7x plus 3 equals 2x squared uh, plus 2x. And now this is just a quadratic. Okay, so um, solve like any quadratic equation. which means that we need to get one side equal to zero and then you have a choice of either factoring or plugging into the quadratic formula. So I'm going to get this side equal to zero since the x squareds are positive and they're over here. I'm going to subtract the 7x on both sides which gives me negative 5x and then I'm going to subtract the 3 which gives me negative 3. This one does actually factor. I know I have to have a 2x and an x here I know the signs are different, which means that my outside and my inside terms have to have a difference of 5. Um, so, And the only way I can put 3 in is 3 and 1. So in order to get up to 5, I need to get the 3 to multiply with the 2. 2x times 3 is 6x. And then I need the 1 here, so that gives me 1x. 6x and 1x do, in fact, have a difference of 5. I need a negative here, so that makes this a negative and this a positive. And so there we are. It's factored. Um, we're not done though because I was told to solve. So x equals negative one half or three. Now were those anything, uh, any problems with the restriction on the variable? Uh, let's have a look. We didn't state the restrictions on the variable so we should go back up here and make sure that we've done that. Uh, x cannot equal zero from this and x cannot equal negative 1 from this. Uh, but other than that, we're good to go because that is not what we got here. So I'm just going to circle my answer and be done with it. Okay, so example three, you may want to factor first. Now you really may want to do this. I know suggesting that you actually want 
to factor is a little bit of a stretch here, but it makes your life so much easier if you factor first. And I apologize, my software is doing weird things. Obviously, this should be down below there, um, but you get the gist. We've got a quadratic over a quadratic here. And yes, in fact, you do want to factor this first. Factoring uh, allows us to state restrictions on the variables because we can tell when the brackets are going to be zero and when the denominators are going to be zero. Factoring also allows us to simplify things because factors can cancel. Um, just terms cannot cancel. I can't do this. Please don't even try. I can't say x squared cancels with x squared. It doesn't work that way. I can't say, oh, 3x takes away a 3x here. It can't do that. You cannot do that. I repeat, you can't do that. You can't cancel terms, but you can cancel factors. So let's go through and factor this um, expression. So on this side, I'm going to factor the top and factor the bottom. And since they're quadratic, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of brackets like this. Um, and so when I factor the top, I have x's at the front. It's a simple trinomial, so I need to multiply to 5 and add to 6. Well, that's pretty simple. Can't get a whole lot simpler than that. We're looking at 5 and 1. And this means that they're the same sign, and this means they must both, both be negative. So we go negative, negative. Now on the bottom is a simple trinomial as well. Um, this time they're different, and they're multiplying to 3, so it's got to be 3 and 1. Since they're different, the signs are different. Um, the bigger one has to be positive because I have more positives in the middle. So there must be a positive here and a negative here. Now, looky here. Like I said, some things cancel. We've got an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is simply 1. So that takes care of that. We don't have to worry about it anymore. It's going to make our life so, so much easier. Uh, on this side, I'm going to factor out a negative on the top. Uh, because I like to see the x's coming first. And so if I take a negative out of here and switch the two terms around, I'm going to have a positive 3x and a negative 2 when I take the negative out and switch things around. Now on the bottom, if I take a negative out of there too, I'm going to get 3x squared minus plus x minus 2. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the negative out front and then I'm going to factor this thing with the positive in there. So I know I need a 3x here and I know I need an x here and since you know that I'm going to be so nice to you and the book is going to be so nice to you that there's going to be a cancellation you may want to try oh look there's a 3x here maybe a negative 2 follows it Okay. If a negative 2 follows it, that must mean that there's a 1 over here because 2 times 1 gives me the 2 that I'm looking for. And what about the signs? Well, if this is a minus 2, and then this would have to be a plus in order for me to get a negative right there. Now, having said that, I don't actually, I didn't use my rules for factoring here to figure this part out. So I'm just going to double check that if I expand this, I actually get that bracket. So 3x times x gives me 3x squared. Check! Uh, 3x times 1 is 3x. And then negative 2x is what I get from the middle term. Positive 3x, negative 2x is a positive x. Check! And lastly, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 check, 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 check. We've got it factored. And since I am oh so nice to you and your textbook would be oh so nice to you, uh, these things cancel. And so the top is now just negative 1 and the bottom is now just negative this bracket. So what we actually have here now that we have simplified this is simply x minus 5 over x plus 3 and the two negatives here are going to cancel, so it's just 1 over x plus 1. And this is a whole lot, a whole lot, an exceptionally easier question than this one. Um, that factoring just made it that much uh, simpler. Now we do have to state the restrictions on the variables though. None of these factors can equal 0 because they were all part of the original equation. Even the ones that cancelled out 
we're still there in the original equation, so we cannot have x equal 1. So what are the restrictions on the variables? Well, x cannot equal negative 3 from that bracket. It cannot equal 1 from this bracket. Even though we canceled it out, it was still there in the original expression. Uh, over here, the ones we canceled out here, x cannot be equal to 2 thirds. And x can't be equal to negative 1. So we got four restrictions on the variables there based on the bottom there. Um, now for this, in order to get rid of those denominators, I need to multiply both sides. So multiply both sides by the common denominator, which in this case is going to be x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now if I multiply this side by x time plus 3 times x plus 1, the two x plus 3's are going to cancel. So all I'm really going to be left with is x minus 5 times x plus 1. And if you need to see that here, I'll just write it in. Uh, I multiplied this side by x plus 3 times x plus 1. And this x plus 3 canceled with this x plus 3, so I'm left with x minus 3 times x plus 1. That was a bit of a wonky bracket. I'm going to correct that. Now, the other side I have to multiply by the same thing. I have to multiply it by x plus 3 times x plus 1. And this x plus 1 is going to cancel with that x plus 1. So on the top, I'm simply left with 1 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3. Now, this side is going to expand, and I'm going to have x squared uh, plus x minus 5x is minus 4x, and then I have minus 5, and that's going to equal x plus 3. And now I'm going to get one side equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract x and subtract 3 on both sides. So that gives me x squared minus 5x um, minus 8 equals 0. Now, just to not be too nice to you, this thing doesn't actually factor. And so this thing, since this thing does not factor, we have but one recourse. Ta-da! There it is, all nice and neat. Our quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Um, so, you always have to get it down to a quadratic. You always have to get one side equal to zero, and then you need to either factor or um, sub into the quadratic formula. Now, it's possible that this could have turned out to be a cubic, and if this had turned out to be a cubic, we would have to use factor theorem and everything that we learned to do in the last unit. Okay, But it's not a cubic, so we can um, be very grateful for that. And now the video's over, so you can carry on and solve your own problems.